Namaste beautiful yogis, day 3 of our beginner challenge, postpartum challenge, postpartum series, beginner series. Now, um, I want to uh, just um, make sure that everybody is on track and doing what's good for their body. I'm gearing this towards a large audience, so not every single pose is good for every single person. If something feels uncomfortable in your body, just back off of it, come back to it later. If the class feels in certain areas a little bit challenging, come back to the class or come back to that part of the class and stay there for a while up until that feels good before moving forward with more advanced poses. I will keep things very gradual and very beginner friendly, but make sure to listen to your body as usual. Let's begin <clears throat> standing tall, feet parallel to each other, toes wide open, arches of the feet lifted, roll the shoulders back and down, open the palms of the hands forward. Today we'll focus on breaths. And as you extend your tailbone down and feel your perineum strong here, Mulaga and Banda engaged or your Kegel muscles, scooping everything up. Feel your belly engaging, feel the core strengthening, imagine your core strong. Drawing the transverse abdominis in towards each other, drawing that navel up, space between the collarbones. Feel your stance here strong. Feel yourself powerful. Nice deep inhalation, followed by complete exhalation. Let's look over the right shoulder. Look over to your left. Lengthening on all four sides of your neck, back to center. Inhale your hands over the head. And as you exhale, diving down with proper core engagement. Bend the knees. Shake your head. And let your head here sway. Hands on the floor. Step back into downward facing dog. Pull the belly in and up. In downward dog, you can really engage uh, your Udiana Banda, that movement of the belly button, which is in and up. Now it's helped by gravity. So gravity is helping you to pull the belly button up towards the rib cage. In this case, it's going down towards the floor. That's why it's helping because gravity can help you pull that muscle, engage that muscle. Inhale the right leg up, pull the belly in and up, and let's pose that heel. One, two, three. Lower the foot down, step it in halfway, grab your foot, step it in all the way, unless you have a, you can step it in all the way. From here, left hand on the floor, bring the right hand onto your knee and look over your right shoulder. Exhale and soften your belly. But still, when you soften, still, still keep everything engaged uh, because we want to, uh, we don't want everything to hang out, to drop out. After, in, especially postpartum, or if you have a weak core, it tends to kind of loosen too much. All right, from here, you're going to uh, bring both hands on the inside of the right foot, press the back heel away from you. Low lunge. You can rock back and forth here, feeling your quadriceps, your hip flexor stretching. Great, from here drop the left knee down, walk it a little further back to make sure that your right knee is above your ankle. And let's bring both hands onto the right knee. Now if you have knee injury and placing your knee on the ground uh, feels a little uncomfortable, feel free to stay off the floor or on the floor, it's optional. All right, from here, we are all gonna come off the floor and just lower the knee down. One, come up. Two, pull the belly in and up. Three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And lower both hands on the floor and flex your right foot, press both hips back, stretching here the hamstrings and mouth stretch. Don't go too far with the stretches. Lengthen through the crown of your head. Beautiful. And from here, come on, on to all fours. Hands underneath the shoulders, open the chest. Pull the belly in, pull it in. Engage the core. Now we're working against gravity, so this is a little extra work. Don't come to this if you're not ready, go, go back or skip it, go back to class one or skip this pose up until you feel that you can pull the belly in, pull it in. Good, take your toes under, downward facing dog. We're not gonna go to plank immediately, we'll do a lot of other work before we do a plank, so everything is happening progressively. Great, inhale the left leg up, Pull the belly in and up, post your heel three times and step it in either with the help of your hand or otherwise, step it in. From here, right hand on the floor and <clears throat> bring the left hand onto your knee, look over that left shoulder, try not to collapse on the right hand. Keep your right shoulder aligned and light. Good, both hands on the inside of the left foot, press the right heel away from you, pull the belly in. You can rock here back and forth, pulling the belly in and just feeling this pose. Now I don't want you to look like this with the knee coming uh, up forward, keep the knee back. Beautiful. From here, drop the knee down on the floor. You can walk your right knee a little further back to make sure that the front knee is aligned. And both hands onto your knee. You can reach over the head, stretching through the hip flexors. Good. From here, we'll all come up and we'll bend the knee and come up 10 times. One, keeping that left knee back. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And lower down, hands on the floor, flex your left foot, level the hips, and pull that foot back towards you, pull the belly in. Keep your chest open back straight, lengthening through the crown of the head. Beautiful, from here, back to on all fours. So whenever you are placing weight onto your hands, I want you to really feel a lift, a spiral that's wrapping around your forearms and lifting some of the weight away from your wrists. I want you to develop this habit of being light on your wrists. So you're not collapsing and really damaging the wrist, but there is integrity, strength in the pose. I promise it works. <laughs> so spread your fingers wide open, lift the arches of your, the palms of the hands also have arches between the thumb and the index, lift those arches of the floor, engage everything, spread the fingers open and feel that lift into your forearm. That will help you with planks. Pull the belly in and up. Really pull. and rest back in child's pose. One more time, coming onto all fours. If you feel ready, we'll take one leg up, otherwise you can stay here and just really engage. 
It helps to do this in front of a mirror. I have a mirror there and I can take my shirt up and I can observe because it does it, it does make a difference when you see how much you're engaging because it does tend to hang out for postpartum mamas. So from here, engage, pull the belly in, take one leg up, right leg up, pull, 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 release, opposite leg. If you don't have a mirror, just check in with your hand. Rest in child's pose. One more time. Coming on to all fours, pull the belly in. This time take the right hand in front of you. Drop it down. Left hand in front of you. Drop it down. Sit back onto your heels. Take a nice relaxing breath. And now we are going to open the heel, open the feet out. If you, your knees are fine with this, uh, everything has to feel fine in your body. Otherwise, sit on your heels. Um, uh, if you're very, very not open to your quadriceps, you can sit onto a block. You can place a block underneath your body here, and that way you will allow uh, slowly to uh, for your quadriceps to stretch. All right, walk your hands in front of you all fours one more time, pull the belly in. Downward dog, tuck your toes under and press back into downward facing dog. Three nice deep breaths in here. Now keeping your legs straight without locking the knees, let's Draw circles with the hips, so the entire torso is moving here and the legs are moving simultaneously and then reversing the direction. Knees can be, uh, uh, knees can be bent, heels can be um, over the top, um, heels can be off the floor, uh, but move your hips together. If you can straighten, straighten, if not, uh, just keep them bent. But, keep, but move everything together because you'll feel this stretching your hips or working on your hips. Great, from here walk your feet between the hands, exhale, folding forward, you can keep your knees bent or straighten your knees if you can. Let your head hang, shake your head yes and no. Pull the belly in, bend the knees, come up to standing, and we're going to do pelvic tilts. So step your feet, well, hip width apart, a little wider maybe, and we're just going to do a pelvic tilt, pull the belly in. Those, these ones have been very helpful for me. And back, pull the belly in and up, and back. Pull the belly in and up. I will demonstrate again for you so that um, kind of you get a visual of what we're doing. Relax the belly. And then pull the belly in and up. Pelvic tilt and back. And back. and back this is very helpful it helps you to connect with your core also what helps is if you're uncertain if you're able to engage in certain poses just bring your hands around it and kind of give it a little help squeeze the two sides of the abs towards each other without too much squeezing you're just kind of bringing a tiny guidance here over over where where your uh, core connection is all right from here inhale the hands over the head pull the belly in 
and up and bring your left knee off the floor. How's that feeling? If you can maintain the connection in the knee, you're doing good. If not, you can place your knee on the floor and just continue with the pelvic tilts with a little step in front of you. For most of you, maybe you will be able to, it depends really how far out you are from either surgery or uh, birth or just in your training. Pull the belly in and up. Let's take the knee off the floor. Complete, 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 complete beginners. Foot can be on the floor. And release. Shake your hands. Shake your feet. Relax your body, soften the jaw. Let's take chair pose. Tuck the tailbone under chair. Shift your weight onto your left foot. Take a big step back into plie. Knees over the ankles, feet. You don't have to rotate your feet all the way out, a common mistake. Just keep the feet pointing in the direction of the knees. So if you're not very open in the inner thighs, then you're going to take a, a wide squat. Stay at the level you're at. Either poses or holding, pull the belly in and up. Great, let's reach side to side here. Connecting with the core. Straighten the legs, pivot onto your heels, turn towards the back of the room, right foot leading, left foot slightly in, heel to arch alignment or heel to heel alignment. Open that left hip, externally rotate the hip, reaching through the hands, reach way ahead of you, pull the belly in and lower down. Don't lower down too way down so that you can, don't go all the way down because you want to keep the connection with the core, pull the belly in, flatten it. And coming up, opposite side. Pivoting on the heels, left heel leading, triangle pose. Coming back up, plie. Go a little deeper and as you come in, really squeeze inner thighs, glutes. One, contract. Two, contract. Three, contracting. Four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, coming back to our pelvic tilt, I'll again demonstrate it. Okay, I can't, I can't explain how important the connection, the proper connection is. Now, I'm eight weeks postpartum, so I do have a little, a little. Uh, M mommy, t mommy tummy <laughs> here. So if I try to squeeze my belly in, nothing happens because that's not that's not what my belly needs. My belly needs for the sides to draw in and for the belly button to pull up, and that would flatten the belly. Um, just trying to pull my belly in doesn't flatten it. So this is pulling my belly in. I, I did it the proper way. This is pulling. Trying to suck my belly in doesn't do much. When I draw the muscles here on the side, I draw them in. You can place your hands on, on them and feel how they're drawing in and slightly up. If it takes you a week or two or three weeks to discover that connection, stay, keep at it. You will get there. Hands on here and you can guide the muscles. So you see how it it flattens much better when I'm pulling it the right way. And also the pelvic tilt helps with 
connecting to those muscles. Later on, you don't even need the pelvic tilt because you'll be able to connect with the muscle properly. Also, during the day, when you're washing dishes, um, carrying groceries, picking up your baby or something heavy, just engage your core. Great, from here, coming back to your mat, front of the mat, inhale, reaching over the head, clasp the hand, and let's reach over to one side and over to the other. Back to center one more time, left and right. Back to center, exhale, either straight legs or bent knees, forward bend. Hands on the floor, step back in downward facing dog. Belly draws in and up. Belly button drawing towards the spine. Inhale the right leg up and take your right foot between your hands. Drop the back heel down, heel to arch alignment, bend the right knee and come up, warrior one. Now the hips are facing forward, the right knee is bent, you can be high here or you can lower down a little, pressing into the outer edge of the left foot. Breathe, open into warrior two. Let's walk the left hand down the left leg, reverse. Coming out of reverse, right elbow over the right knee, side angle, or walk it down. Walk the right hand down. Beautiful. And coming back to warrior two. Pull the belly. Great. From here, pivoting on the heels, turn towards the back of the room. Warrior one, hips facing forward. Try to even out the hips forward. Pressing to the outer edge of the right foot. Do not lock your right knee. Keep a mild bend, if unsure. Warrior two, so take a little wider stance. Walk the right foot further back. Reverse the warrior walk, the right hand down the right leg. Try to keep your shoulders in the same plane. Pull the belly in and up. And side angle, elbow over the knee or lower the hand down. You can reach over the head, great. Both hands on the floor and step back into downward dog. You can bring the right leg up and now walk your Walk your feet between your hands, forward bend. Bend the knees, come up, chair pose and tuck the tailbone slightly. Beautiful. We are gonna go to a wall or a table or a countertop for a proper plank with proper core engagement. Pull the belly in and up. And I'm going to walk my hands a little lower than around my rib cage, basically, and lower down here in Chaturanga, pull the belly in and up. Press up, lower down, press up. Let's go for, I'll do 10 Chaturangas, you, you do as many as you can with proper core engagement. That's all that is um, important right now get the upper body strong while we're strengthening the core but also after good the next pose we'll do is plank again on our surface wall or wherever you can find it you can be a little lower on a table even on a chair if you feel comfortable and confident and from here walk your feet a little further away from you engage your core and take one leg off the floor 
beautiful opposite side. One more time. Opposite side. All right, that was work for me because keeping the core engaged is work. From here, we're gonna go for side lunges. Take a side step with your right leg and bend the right knee and come back up. Pull the belly in. As you come, even do a little tuck and pull it a little further more. Two, three, help with your hands. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's go over to the opposite side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Inhale your hands over the head, clasp the hands, reach over to one side, lengthen both sides of your torso, over to the opposite side. All right, a little more complicated or a little more taking it to the next level with the step back lunges. We already did them in the first class. You are going to take your left leg back in I'll give you two options, either in a back lunge, keeping the right knee over the right ankle, or in a cross lunge. If you come back to this class, alternate. I'll do cross lunge, and then I will press my leg back three times. Cross lunge. Pull the belly in and up. One, two, three. Seven, eight, nine, and ten, opposite side. Nine and last one. From here, you can go grab a chair. You can do this without a chair as well. Uh, as well. Same move will be in a lunge instead of on a chair. So we'll take a step. I'll give you the other option too. We'll take a, you can place the chair against the wall for safety. I'm just doing this for the purposes of the camera location. Um, right leg on the, on the chair, come up and draw a circle with your toes. So one, two, three, knee up so that you can engage the core even better. And lower down coming up 
circle one two really engaging the core three knee up lower down same thing can be done with a lunge and then mini circles engaging the core three four five six seven I hope my counting has been semi on point <laughs> I've been known to eight Pull the belly in. Nine. Really squeeze everything, all the muscles that are working, hips and booty. Last one. And opposite side. Two. Four. Side. From here we are going to come into standing with feet hip width apart and we'll just move the upper body from the belly button side to side. Pull the belly in and up and just feel your belly working here. Excellent and we are going to take a small tap back and circle the leg in front of us. Five of those on each side. Kind of feel like a dancer here. And just engage your focus on your belly, focus on your breath. So tap back and circle the foot. Tap back, two, three, four, Exhale, five. And opposite side. Tap. Four. And five. All right, we're using movement to find different ways to engage the belly. Inhale, reaching over the head. Exhale, forward bend. Walk your feet a little wider than hip width apart, toes pointing out, yogic squat. Excellent, and come into a seated. Left foot in the right upper thigh, extend the right leg in front of you, exhale forward bend. Keeping the chest open, lengthening the back of the neck. Opposite side, flexing the extended foot. This stretches the hip here. So of the feet together.
you can bring one hand on the thigh opposite hand to opposite thigh extend the left leg place the right ankle right above the left knee bring awareness to your core and stretch forward bend inhale coming up and we're going to go over to the other side release roll onto your side and come down on the floor onto your back pull the belly in and up pelvic tilt lower back on the floor feet on the floor and we're going to do pelvic tilts tilting the pelv uh, the tailbone pressing the lower back into the floor pull the belly in and up and hold but release and again and release one more time exhale and then pull the belly in and up and release exhale release one more time Inhale as you exhale, go into the pelvic tilt, pull the belly in and up. Alright, we are going to go into bridge lift, make sure that your heels are underneath your knees and we're going to Bring the body up and lower it down. Pull the belly in and up and again lift, lower, lift, lower. Two, three, four, five, really flexing the body. Seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five. You can hug your knees into your chest. Lower the feet down onto the ground. And we're going to press the lower back into the floor, extend the heel away from us and bring it towards us. Pull the belly in and up. Four, five, opposite side. Let's explore a new move and if it feels a little too advanced uh, for now, uh, skip it, do the heel slides. Um, for some of you it will be alright to do it, for some of you maybe not, so uh, take it at your uh, pace. A 90 degree angle uh, at the right knee bend. <sighs> Pull the belly in and up, lower back presses into the ground. And lower down. Touch the toes onto the floor and come back up. Three times and opposite side. Pull the belly in and up, lower back presses down. Good. Hug your knees into your chest, into your rib cage. Let's bring the right knee over, over the left knee, twist, and 
know, opposite side, left knee over the right, look away from your knees. And Shavasana. So lay down on the floor, relax your belly now, let your feet lower down to the sides, palms of the hands facing up. Soften the shoulders, soften the jaw. Feel your body heavy on the floor, relaxing on the floor. Feel your mind softening, relaxing, melting, surrendering to the moment. Feel your breath surrendering. Allowing yourself to just be. without having to be something, to be somewhere, to do something, but just to be, just to exist. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.